Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can control three pivot tables with one slicer. So first of all, I'm going to create a simple pivot table and then show you how to do it. So to create a pivot table, this is a raw data set. I'm in the raw data set on the insert tab, click on pivot table. It will pick up that data set. If you've got a, a formatted table, you would say table there. You could name this range and it, it, you could type it in there. But I'm just going to let it pick this list for now. I want it in existing worksheet. I'm going to get it to go into G1, this first one. Clicking OK to that and there's my grid. So these are all the fields for this pivot table. I'll just bring this over a bit so you can see it. So I want to drag location into roles to give me a, a list of location and then I want to put sales in there and I need to format this to pounds and the best way to do that is through here. So go to value field settings, change that to number format, accounting, that'll be set to pounds, click OK and OK. So I've got a a table there which is looking at this raw data pivot table there and I might want to put a filter there of salesperson and quarter or you might alternatively look at what happens if you put salesperson under location well that gets really big it's almost as big as the raw data so it's pointless in my mind to have a pivot table as big as the raw data it's just not what it's about so you might put salesperson in columns to see how that works. And that's not too bad. It's still quite big. And I'm scrolling left and right. And the idea behind a, a dashboard environment is that you don't have to scroll left and right. Now, what I'm going to do is take these filters out for a minute. And then just copy this pivot table. Highlight it. And with my control key, I'm just going to hold my control key down, which will copy that. And then I'll move it across a bit more and then do the same thing again. Just pick it up, move it over, control key down, let go. So I've now got three separate pivot tables, all looking at the same data source over here. On this one, I'm going to change it so it's not location, it's quarter. So quarter. So that's going to show me the quarter. This one, I'm taking location out and putting salesperson in, like so. List of sales. As long as these don't bang into each other, you'll be okay. I'll just highlight this one again and just copy this because I've just had another idea. I'll go for date as well. Drop that in there. Just move that across a little bit so you can see all four. Make that wider. So I don't want quarter in there, I want date in there. Now I've already grouped these dates. I'll show you how I did that. So they don't normally come down like that. If, if I right click and ungroup, you'll get a big long list of dates. That's what normally appears when you do that, when you first drag a date field in. But that doesn't mean you can't then group it. So I'll just group it. And you can group you can group cat categories as well. But I'll, I'll go for quarters and years and not months. I'll take months off and click OK to that. And then that'll collapse it down. So what I've got now is four pivot tables all looking at the same data source, I'll just make that a little bit smaller so it all fits on the same screen, all looking at this data source. However, if I bring a slicer on, that's a pivot table analyze up there, if I insert slicer, I'll go for salesperson. So I want the salesperson OK. Let's see what happens now. So if I click on Ann Pearson, only that last one changed. Carol Mason, this last one's changing, but this one isn't. That's not filtering it. So I'll take that off. So what you have to do on the slicer that you bring in, you have to go up to the ribbon at the top, slicer, and on the left-hand side, you've got report connections. You click on that, and then you make sure every one of these pivot tables that we've just copied is ticked. And then that way, so that's it. OK. Now, if I click on Ann Pearson now, everything filters to show Ann Pearson, Brian Smith. These figures are changing as well. Carol Mason, Chris, whatever, whichever person you pick. And if I click on my control key and click on a couple, that's filtering this information there. So all 
of these pivot tables are now controlled by that one slicer. So apply for a timeline. If I go back to pivot table analyze and go insert timeline, which you can only use if you've got a date field, which I do have. Insert timeline. There's the only date field I do have. So click on that. That'll drop the timeline in. And again, if I click on a month, I need to check what it's doing. It looks like it's just doing this last pivot table. So I'll, I'll get rid of that for a minute. Go to the timeline tab. Go to report connections. And make sure you tick on all of the pivot tables that you want this timeline to affect. So I want it to affect them all. Click OK. And then do that again. And then you can see now that that timeline is affecting all four pivot tables. And then I'll just clear that one off. So that's all I want to talk about in this little video. How you can control four or multiple pivot tables with one slicer and one timeline. So hopefully it's of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.